Well, hello everybody. We'll get started today. Appreciate you coming out to the Pizza Ranch. Appreciate their support. I uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, and it looks like we continue to eat very well uh, here today. Pizza Ranch is good for that. So appreciate them uh, giving us a great discount out here and have us out here. Basketball season fully underway, and to get things started today, we'll have Hard Rocker men's coach welcome up Jason Henry. Sneak out the back door here in a second to get get my third helping and <laughs> continue on from Thursday. There's no doubt about it. We had a great, uh, had a good good break. We've had the first break and basically my whole uh, coaching and uh, um, playing career of not playing over Thanksgiving. I don't remember the last time that uh, we actually had a couple days off and and took advantage of it. So uh, I saw my wife wasn't overly happy with me. I guess she posted on Facebook when. Our first day off, and uh, uh, we went to a basketball game. So uh, that was part of the deal, I guess. Like she says, uh, being married to, to me, but we enjoyed uh, enjoyed some time away uh, with the family and that kind of thing. And, and hopefully, our guys did as well. We left off on Tuesday um, down at USD, and uh, a lot of guys left from that game and, and went back home to uh, the eastern side of the the world, whether they're Wisconsin guys or Michigan guys and that kind of thing. So. Uh, I think they all had some good breaks and a uh, good time with their family too. Uh, during that game, it, it was okay. We were a little short-handed with some injuries and things, but uh, uh, guys that did play uh, played pretty well. We played well in stretches, which is great for us right now to see. Uh, we talked a lot about that to our guys as far as we played a great 10 minutes in the second half and a great you know 12 minutes in the first half. Uh, we just got to make sure that we're playing longer and extended time, especially when you're playing Division One schools. You just can't do that. Um, but now that we get into a conference, we can't afford to do that either. You know, we have one of the top premier conferences in the country, and uh, uh, as we saw this past week, uh, Pueblo beat went down and uh, uh, beat Tarleton. And we're familiar with Tarleton, and we obviously haven't had much luck with them. They're, uh, in my mind, a mid-major Division One school playing Division Two basketball, and then we had a team in our conference uh, go beat them. So we know we're going to have our hands full. It's like playing the, the Division One schools. Uh, we've had some pretty good prep going into that. Uh, we've had some games, obviously we won a few games and that kind of thing too, uh, but within our exhibition season, which was USD, we did uh, uh, have some great competition. I think we're, we're definitely prepared for Thursday night. Uh, we played Black Hill State, uh, 7.30 game up there. Uh, excited uh, you know, to get going, not just because it's Black Hill State, but um, you know, once again, I had a few days off, so as much as film as we've ever watched, probably getting ready for one game instead of two games and all those kind of things. Um, but I went back through to figure out how many days it's been since our last conference game, and it's been 1,738 days since we last played. Well, then I went back and looked too, going, okay, well, what, what happened 1,738 days ago? It will be, so it's 1,736 days, I guess, right now. So, uh, but. Went back and looked, and sure enough, we're playing for a conference championship, and that was the year that we played against Black Hill State up there. So, kind of crazy, our first round game, uh, our first game this year uh, is uh, against Black Hill State, is to start our new conference, all those wonderful things that we are very excited to, to get going and, and, and have some opportunities. You know, it's, it's a very good conference, um, but uh, if we can get healthy, is going to be our number one thing right now. Uh, but uh, if our guys can kind of come together and, and start playing a little bit better on the defensive side, start making some shots on the offensive side, we've struggled a little bit offensively, um, start doing some of those things, we're very excited about uh, um, getting into the on that. So, um, Phillip's here, but I'll, I'll answer some questions here before we get rolling and uh, uh, with him about our season, looking forward to whatever. How are you doing injury-wise? Um, we got a couple guys that won't be playing possibly for a while. Uh, Wenzel <clears throat> is hopefully going to be back, uh, not next week, but the following week. Uh, Joe Newkirk, who hasn't played uh, for a couple weeks now or uh, a couple games now, uh, he's out indefinitely as well. Um, and then uh, Marco is his day to day as well, too. So um, we got a couple guys that are out for the season, um, but those guys that we're planning on having back at some point. We'll hopefully be back uh, sooner than later. I don't know if they'll, a couple of them for sure will be back tomorrow night or on uh, Thursday night, uh, but uh, uh, definitely by hopefully even this semester. What does Black Hill State play Thursday? Black Hill State is uh, uh, you know very young. 
Uh, they shoot the ball really well. Ryan Riley's playing extremely well. They went down and played a Division One school down in Arizona. Uh, Arizona and uh, he had 34, I think, in that game. Uh, next night out, or a couple nights later, they play Billings, who's um, a team that just went up and beat University of Mary, who, who beat us by 15, 18, whatever it ended up being. So uh, they're obviously a very good team, and he had 30 plus in that game too. And, and it's not just him spotting up and then things. He's he's just one of those guys that's playing with a lot of confidence that we all try to do it as in the athletic world, and, and uh, he's doing that very well. Uh, the Krogman kid, you know, just some different things that they run with Coach Trumbauer over there, and uh, a lot of dribble drives, spread you out. They'll go four guards, basically uh, uh, to five guards on the floor at times, um, spread you out, and, and back cut uh, you uh, coming off and dribble drive action. So uh, he does a great job of, of doing some things that way and a lot of ball screens, and, and uh, you know, we're, we're going to have our hands full. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And, of course, you throw in the rivalry, and, and it's going to be a – uh, Thursday night game, so I imagine all the students are going to be there and, and, and a great atmosphere for us. Anything else? Oh, Philip gets out here. Talk about things that your team needs to do to be successful in the RMAC. Um, well, our biggest thing is just for us to be successful in the RMAC is, is get back to what we really have hung our hats on the last number of years since we've been here, and, and you know, as the slogan goes, is, is uh, uh, defense wins championships. And, and it's true, you know, we're going to win some games by, hopefully, you know, we keep saying our scoring and our offense is something that we're, we're a lot better at right now. We're not showing that because we got guys that aren't hitting shots um, that we're expecting and, and we know will hit those shots. But either way, sometimes the shots aren't going in when you're playing a, on the road, you're playing two nights in a row, uh, all those kind of things that go with the conferences, you've got to be able to get stops and you, and you have to be able to um, get it done on the defensive side. And, and right now we're not. Uh, we're not anywhere near where we need to be uh, on the defensive end. Um, you know, we concentrate a lot on the last couple of days. In fact, we just had individual workouts this morning, and and you know, usually we're doing some shooting and doing things. We're working half of it on defense. You know, so it, it's something that we have to do a better job of, um, and, and we will. You know, we got guys to do it. Talked about that with the USD game. We'd go 10 minute stretches. We did everything what we wanted them to do basically to a T, and we outscore them by, by two or four points, I think, in that 12-minute stretch or whatever it was. You know, so, and it just came down to the defensive side. We didn't do anything different offensively, still missed some shots that we've been missing all year, uh, and we still outscored them because our defense got done. So, anything else? All right, great. We'll bring uh, Philip Shanelak up here. Uh, Philip's been in our program now for 17 years. <laughs> Uh, does feel like it doesn't go. Uh, you know, his, his parents have been to all of our games now this year. I guess they missed one, and that's probably the only one that they'll miss. And, and every time I see him, I'm just like, what in the world are we going to do? And Justin's another one that's been with him the whole time. Justin Shook, which we'll have up here as well. And, um, you know, Dalry, they're, they're two captains of ours. Uh, you know, we, we've leaned on them plenty over the years. Uh, both guys that have registered, they know what our program's all about. They've been here when uh, uh, we were good defensive teams. <laughs> they know what we can do it. Um, but uh, just a special young man that, you know, I like to tell his parents all the time. I tell him all the time. I'm just like, what in the world are we going to do without you guys? And not just because they've been here, just because they're exceptional young men. And uh, um, we'll let Philip talk to you about anything and everything. He's been up here a few times. Once again, this is his 100th time doing this because he's been here for 17 years. So, go up, Sean. I'd like to say first is that coach is only going to miss me because my dad brings some food. Oh. <laughs> Not only. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm a redshirt senior. This is my fifth year in the program. I like my redshirt year is the first year we went independent. We started our transition. So like the, our postseason that year was our five team tournament in Spearfish. Then after that, we haven't had postseason, so I'm excited that we have an opportunity to play this year at postseason. Um, we just got to get stuff done on the way in order to be in that position to play postseason. Um, I'm a civil engineering major. I graduate in December with my undergrad and May with my master's in structural engineering. And I'll just let you guys ask questions, I guess. <laughs> you got any good hunting stories? Good hunting stories? I don't know. <laughs> I already got my bow buck this year, so it's probably only my third day of hunting. And normally I go maybe 20 days before I get here. Where did your folks live? Where did you grow up? What was that? Where did you grow up? Um, from Forest River, North Dakota. Okay. It's a 
very small town northwest of Grand Forks, right on the Minnesota, North Dakota, Canada kind of border. Where would you like to get a job? Um, for the last couple of years, I've been thinking the cities and Denver, just because both are fairly close to home. I'm kind of a, kind of a homeboy. Uh, <laughs> not gonna lie about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> cities, I. I have friends and family in the cities and it's only a five hour drive from home and there's a lot of engineering opportunities in the cities and I had a interview last Friday with a person in the cities for a great company and hopefully that all works out. You got a favorite coach Henry story? Um I like every time his face is like beet red. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know? <laughs> He's not so happy, but it makes me laugh, honestly. <laughs> Does it make you play better? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> but I don't get it. Oh. <laughs> so you play that way on purpose in the game to get his face going. I guess so. I don't know his strategy. He's got a whole bunch of strategies we don't know about. <laughs> Explain to him, our, since we're at Pizza Ranch, our North Dakota Pizza Ranch strategy from a couple years ago where you not remember this? No. <laughs> we went to we went to Pizza Ranch, basically on every trip. In North Dakota, they're all over the place, and uh, we we didn't lose on the road every time that we went there. So we were going two to three times a weekend to Pizza Ranch, so we made sure that we didn't lose. So hopefully that carries over to this week right now. Does that mean we should win on Thursday, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> One other thing I like to point out is that as a player. We're four and one against TH. Oh, yeah. So I'm Woo! excited to keep that streak going. Yeah. Coach, if you're counting down the days since the last conference game, and you've been around engineers a long time. It's all about the numbers. All about the numbers. It's good to see it's running off on you. I want to welcome up uh, women's head coach. They had a nice win at St. Cloud State night before Thanksgiving. Hard Rock for Women beat St. Cloud State by one in OT. Welcome up Ryan Larson. Thanks, Nate. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Uh, a lot of people have snow days today, so kudos to you guys. Great to be here. Appreciate it. I, um, yeah, last time we talked, uh, we had a game coming up against the University of Mary, and um, yeah, quite frankly, just didn't play very well at all. Offensively, defensively, uh, just didn't have a great flow on either end of the court. And uh, it, was, it was a big mystery for me why, because, uh, you know, Prior to that, we get the presentation in Johnson Wales, you know, we were we were clicking on all cylinders. And uh, you know, uh, give Mary credit, they're a good team. They they took us out of our flow and disrupted us a little bit, you know, played physical, um, and kind of controlled the tempo. Uh, but you know, the one thing that we learned from that was, you know, kind of real disappointing about that, you know, besides the losses, you know, we took some shots, you know. We came out 7-0 and they came fighting back and they threw some body punches and some blows and we just never really recovered. You know, we never got ourselves up 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 the mat. And you know that right there is what we focused on quite a bit as a team. Uh, the few following days leading up to uh, our St. Cloud game was, you know, you just got to take one possession at a time. You know, you can't let one turnover turn into another. You can't let one bad defensive possession turn into another. Uh, and that's kind of what that University of Mary game was. And yeah, so heading to St. Cloud, you know, I just I just had a really good feeling about that game. You know, we had a couple of really good practices leading up to it. We had our best shoot around of the year. Uh, you could just see how dialed in and focused the ladies were on, uh, on playing well. And, uh, man, we did. <laughs> we played extremely well. Yeah. St. Cloud is a really good team. Uh, I believe they were picked to win their division with Northern Sun, which is a, yeah, obviously a really good basketball league. And, uh, <coughs> We started off, we were in a hole 9-0 against St. Cloud, and the kids just chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. They hung in there one possession at a time, got a stop, we got a basket, got another stop. You know, all the things that we talk about <clears throat> as a team that are important, you know, throughout the flow of a game, and it just did a, a fantastic job. Uh, we had some incredible ind individual performances. Yeah, everybody contributed. You know, if they got in the game or not, everybody contributed, but uh, some fantastic 
individual performances. Uh, Callie Peterson was an absolute monster that game. Uh, led us in scoring and just made big plays for us down the stretch. Uh, Taylor Molstead was again very big for us. Uh, Alexis Long <clears throat> had a, a just a whale of a game. Uh, Coach Paul and I talked, you know, prior to that game, just really knowing that would be a good game for Alexis. It was in her home area. She had a nice little contingent of, of fans there. Um, it was a good matchup for her defensively, and she hit a couple big baskets for us. And just, you know, at the point guard spot, you know, she played a really good game for us. So that, that was really fun to see for Lexi to go home to her home area and, and you know, not only play well, but, but get a win. Um, then obviously Megan was, was a beast for us as well. She, she guarded a, a really good player, uh, one of their senior players. You know, she led them in scoring, but uh, you know, she's an outstanding player. And Megan did a, a really good job of guarding that kid, but then just taking at her offensively. You know, she got to the free throw line, I think, what, 14 times that game? Yeah, 14 times that game. That, that's big. That's big. And again, in a women's basketball game, college basketball right now, with five fouls in a quarter, double bonus, and that's big. And that, that really helped us there for Megan get to the line for us there. Um, you know, and we. We sent that game into overtime. Uh, Callie Peterson made the play of the basket. There was some time left on the clock. We defended it well. Um, and then overtime, uh, you know, we we kind of drew up a little set. We had a timeout. We drew up a set. Um, we didn't perform it. We executed quite right. But uh, credit to the kids. You know, more often than not, that's going to happen. And, and it, more often, it, that's exactly how it works. And. Our kids made a play. You know, Kelly drove the basket. She found Taylor on the wing. Taylor was calm and cool and knocked one down. And again, we there was time left on the clock. Uh, they had a couple shots to take the lead and win the game. Uh, but you know, we made the plays defensively down the stretch, and that, that was that's a big win for our program. Uh, not you know just not beating the, the opponent that we did, but you know, confidence-wise, for us to go on the road and beat a caliber team like that, you know, that, that gives us all kinds of just confidence of knowing what this team can be. Um, and we've learned that lesson from the Mary Green game. But you know, we gotta sustain. And that's what we're talking about right now. You know, you, you can't just go on the road and get a good win like that and you know, fall flat on your face your next time out. You have to sustain. And that, that was a lesson that we learned against the University of Mary. Uh, so I, I'm very pleased with where we're at right now as a, as a basketball program. But you know, everything aside, you know, we're focusing on next Thursday. Coming up here, obviously, big game. Opening our MAC game for us, Black Hill State, you know, it's very exciting for us. But uh, uh, I like where we're at. You know, BH is a good team. Coach Nori does a fantastic job. They're extremely physical. They rebound really well. Uh, so we're going to have to play well, really well to go up there and, and get a win. But uh, yeah, well, you know, non conference wise, I could be happier where we're at. But uh, I'll, we're focused at one game at a time right now, starting Thursday. I uh, got Megan Rohr here. Any questions for me before I bring Megan up here? Yes, sir. Thank you for calling me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I did notice that you mentioned was how you know we get within the three, and then yeah. they need to be behind eight, and then we have to come back again. We must have done that. It seemed like it happened in yeah. weeks yeah. in that set. Yeah. We get that three pointer and they bank it in from that guy. So, yeah. the credit to what you said about the team learning to has to resolve and come back and come back and come back mm -hmm. and not let one lead to another that they kept fighting the whole game. No, they, they, again, credit to the kids. You know, they, they never, you know, what, it's one thing that we say, you know, don't, don't look at the scoreboard. You know, focus on one possession at a time. And I, I think they really did that. You know, they were, they made big shots, but it didn't phase us. We came down, made a play, and got stopped. Uh, you know, I think there was about six or eight lead changes in that game. And you know, quite a few of them late in the game. Uh, so again, it was, it was a lot of fun. You know, that, you know, that's what's so special about being a coach. You know, being in a locker room after a win like that, <laughs> it, it's really fun. Seeing the smiles on the girls' faces and you know, just you know, them starting to know and believe of what what they can be is it's really gratifying. <laughs> Anything else? Anything specific you're going to do against Black Hills at all? You know. Uh, we're starting to dive into that a little bit right now. Uh, you know, one thing about BH, they they played in two weeks. You know, they uh, they played obviously Johnson Wales in presentation, and they played uh, Northern. Uh, Northern State uh, the same night that we played. 
uh, Mary, so they haven't played for a while. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out and run something totally different than they had the first three games. Um, you know, I, I know what we have to do. Uh, I know we got to defend very well, like we have been. Uh, I know we got to rebound a lot better, and you know we have to we have to execute offensively because you know they're they're a very physical defensive game team. Um, and that's one thing that Mary kind of did to us a little bit that uh, knocked us out of our flow. You know, so if we can run our offense against their physicality, uh, I still like our chances of you know continuing to score. And that's one thing that we've been able to do this year is put a lot of, a lot of points on the board. Yeah. Well, great. Thank you guys again for for coming out. Uh, we got Megan Rohr here. She's a junior for us this year. Uh, uh, just a tremendous young lady, uh, both on the court and off the court. She got a 4.0 GPA, uh, probably working on your second master's degree already. I don't know, Carter, was she doing that? Uh, but uh, just a fantastic lady. It's great to have Megan as an upperclassman right now because uh, our, our, a lot of our kids work really hard, but uh, Megan, she sets the bar for us as you know, working hard off the court. And uh, for our younger post players to see that right now, hey, that's how Megan got so good is the work ethic that she puts in uh, as a true testament to her, to her as a, a person and an athlete. And uh, you know, she knows she's got to get better at things. And one thing that she's really gotten better at this year is defense. We kind of challenged her last year a little bit. Uh, she got to defend better, and she certainly has. So she's a complete player for us this year, but I sure love the fact that she can still put 15 points on the board for us every night. There's no doubt about it. Megan Roar, come on up here. <laughs> um, so I'm Megan Rohr, like you said, I'm a junior on the team, and I'm majoring in industrial engineering, <laughs> and um, I'm from Denver, Colorado. So this last weekend, or week, I guess, um, was a huge win for us. I think that Coach calls it our signature win. Um, we all kind of came together as a team, everybody contributed. Um, and Coach Miguez, our strength coach, even said we acted like we won the Super Bowl at the end of the game. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the whole bench was so excited after the game, and I mean, it was just, it was fun to play in, and that was just a really fun game and fun win for us. So needless to say, we're excited to enter into the RMAC, um, enter into conference play this week. I actually have a baby sister in the RMAC, and so I'm really excited to play against her. She plays at CSU Pueblo. So we play them January 15th. <laughs> the Roar Sisters square off. But um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm really excited to be in a conference and actually play for something at the end of the year. Um, I think it's going to be really good for us, and um, especially starting off strong like we did this season. So, does anybody have any questions for me? I just wanted to compliment both the men's team and the women's team that the bench seems to be very supportive of yes. the girls playing out there. I mean, they're yes. cheering for you, they're they're in it all the way, and yes. that really makes it fun. I'm sure oh, the yeah. support that you guys oh, have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a blast. Um, our bench is amazing. Um, every good play, everybody's standing up, everybody gives high fives. Um, we definitely have a good full team. So how did you, as a team, after the Mary, the Mary game was a... Coach said it. As a team, how did you, the coaches aren't around, what did you do? We kind of had to come together. Um, that's what you have to do. You can't kind of fall apart and just be individual players. You have to come together as a team. And we kind of, um, we met together in the locker room. We had a little chat. Um, we had to we had to get better in those um, couple of practices too before we played again. And um, we really worked hard in practice to kind of make up for um, that. Mary game. <laughs> and your best Coach Larson story so far? Oh, goodness. Um, probably when he ripped his pants in a game last year. He's just always really animated. He's like our bench, just really animated <laughs> on the side, always doing different things in front of the bench. And yeah, one time he ripped his pants. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's fun to see that your coach really supports you during the game. Um, it's really that intro, just like the players are, so that's good to see. It was one of my many hop, skip, jumps, and I, I jumped really high and landed in a squatting position. And, yeah. <laughs> Life after basketball, what's what's next for you? 
Um, well, currently I'm looking for an internship this summer, and I'm hoping that kind of determines what I'm going to do after school. Um, I don't know where I'll be this summer, but um, yeah, like I said, hopefully that'll determine what I do when I graduate. Talk about that project you're helping that group out with. Okay. Um, so we're helping a senior design group. They're designing a new athletic training room in the King Center, um, which would actually be really helpful for a lot of athletes, just better equipment, um, potentially more trainers, um, just, I don't know. They, they are dealing with the design part of it, but we are, um, I'm a part of an uh, econ group that's working on an economic analysis of the training room, and so we're kind of helping them out, and um, we'll present next week to um, some of the athletic department about that, but um, so far that project's going well, and <laughs> yeah, so we'll see, hopefully we can get that through and maybe a potential new training room. Thank you. A couple reminders for everybody. Thursday, hope to see you up at Black Hill State, 5.30 with the women's game, 7.30 with the men's game, and Hard Rocker Sat is doing a food drive competition. So bring canned goods, non-perishable items to Black Hill State Thursday. And then on February 24th at the Civic Center, when we play down here, bring canned goods as well. We're going to announce the winner. It's a competition between BH and the School of Mines. Who gets the most food? Right? Let's get that right. Okay. Joel. There's no discount with entry on the food. Just so we're clear on that. That's, that's just so we're clear. All right. It's a free food. Six cans food doesn't mean you get in for free. It just means you contribute more. That's right. It's a food drive competition. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with admission. But bring your food so we can beat Black Hill State in one more way. Uh, that's the goal. We'll announce the winner on February 24th at halftime. Thanks to Beach Rats. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. We'll see you Thursday night.